Hi guys, welcome to the fourth install to my Tuscan countryside series in anticipation of my Tuscany watercolor retreat coming up in May. We are on April and this is what we are going to be painting, this beautiful little Tuscan house surrounded by cypress trees and some greenery around it. So we're going to keep this very basic. Um, the paper I am using for this is the Bao Hong watercolor paper for my brushes, pretty much keeping in tune with all the previous videos from this series. I'm using the Princeton Neptune number no. six, the Princeton Heritage zero, and then Princeton Velvet Touch number no. four. For colors, I am switching it up a little bit for this video and we're using my White Knights and Last but not least, we've got water handy. We even have a paper towel handy and we are ready to begin. Before we begin, I wanna remind you guys, if you like watercolor, you like painting for fun, you like learning new things and experimenting, please hit the like button and hit the subscribe button as I post tons of watercolor fun stuff on here on my channel. All right, and on that note, let us get to mixing some colors. So I want to give this scenery a little bit of a faded look, not so much hard edge. So like the background will be slightly faded and so will the foreground over here in the front. And to start that off, we're going to be mixing a little bit of umber, which is this beautiful little brown. I mixed a little bit of green in it and it kind of looks like this. Um, the picture reference, by the way, guys, is listed in the description below. So feel free to get it off there and hop back on here, do your little sketch and then join me. So I'll be dampening this background first and then we'll skirt our way around the trees and around the details of the house just so it doesn't get on top of that. And we're giving it a nice wash with our umber mixed with a little bit of green and uh, let's see, about a 30% 30, 30 color, 70% water is what we're looking at. And I'm using my Princeton Oval to dampen the area around the house and the cypress trees, roughly. It might catch onto some areas because I'm not being super precise and that is okay. This is the loose sort of look that I am going for. All right, so now that I've dampened it, I'm getting some of my green, I'm going to drop that in right around here. And I just want it to sort of bloom and give us that nice, beautiful, romantic, loose watercolor feel. One thing to keep in mind is because this is so light, the uh, mixture is light we are um and and then the foreground elements are going to be a lot darker this is why i'm not being too precise in where if the color gets a little bit onto the cypress or a little bit onto the roof of the house we're just gonna allow this to spread and give us that nice pretty bloom like it is doing right now and then we build up on this I've also dampened the area a little bit outside of the uh, line that I have in the background. And this is just so that it gives us a nice little faded edge as opposed to a hard edge. Okay, so just like that. And then I'm washing off the color, getting some water, just dampening the edges to really smoothen that out. And this is where paper towel comes in handy because you just dab, 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 and voila. Okay, so now that that's done, we just want to highlight the areas around these places to be a little bit darker. So I'm just gonna drop in some color, just a little bit. And then we get that nice dark to light. The next thing I'm doing is the house 
and then we'll do the greenery in front of the house. So I'm getting a little bit of yellow ochre and this time I'm switching out for my number four and we're going to go in and paint the house right there. So we want that nice, beautiful pinkish hue, sorry, not pinkish, yellowish hue. So water down again. And it's fine if it kind of goes into your areas where the the trees are meant to be. It's fine if you're overlapping on some of the windows because our windows are going to be a nice dark brown. I'm trying to leave a little bit of white space around the outskirts of elements like where there's a division right here um, around the windows a little bit. And then off to the side to do this. If you look in the image, this side is where the sun is sort of hitting. So you might want to add a little bit of orange if you want to it just to sort of give it that differentiation, just like what I did here. And uh, yeah, you should be good right there. So I did a little bit of orange there. I'm going to get a little bit of that. Uh, let's see, mix a little bit of Mars Brown into some of that yellow and give it another wash on top of this house here. And all I'm doing is trying to get a nice sort of gradient effect with all these beautiful browns in the house. Clearly it has to be different from the side. So now that we've done that, we're going to tackle the greenery around here. This is this is the main part or the essence of the whole thing. I mean, outside of the house, that is. So we're going to get, um, let's see, for the greens, let's use a mixture of umber and green. So here's my umber, which is a very darkish sort of brown. And I'm going to water it down a lot because when we go in and add some of that green, or actually, let's do the flip. Sorry. Let's do the flip. I'm going to start with a green and then we'll dab in some umber. So here's some of my green. This is what it looks like. And this way we have a little bit more control of how dark the estate or the surroundings look. So getting some of my green, uh, we're now going to dampen this area around here where you see all the greenery minus the little lanes. Okay, so here we go. So this is where we want to make the lanes more, keep them white rather, keep them as white space. So we're really honing in on making sure that the lanes don't get painted in. This is our Lucy detail. Got a little bit of lane painted there, but you can always take your brush, take water on it and swipe it off. I'm going to drop some of that in there. In here. Perfect. So you see how we've got that nice green. We're continuing on. You can even dab in actually before we continue on take some of that umber let's dab in some of the darker tones right where we can see that there's like darker shrubs or bushes and the reason we want to do that is just so that it gives us those nice blooms before it completely dries off And the more you layer on, the darker it will get. So be mindful of that. And this is how we're going to make sure that some elements stand out more so than others by adding a little bit more dabbing of color. Okay, it's beautiful little gradients happening there. So we're continuing on to do the same thing over on this side. 
making sure we're keeping our pathway open ish at least roughly painting in our cypress trees a bit and just going all along where we've got shrubs and kind of ending it right there and then just like we did here adding that darker tone we're going to go ahead and add some of that darker tone right in these areas here some over here want to do some wet on wet shadows right here and really add shape to our shrubs I'm going to even add some of that happening over on this side because now it's dried up just a little bit so it's allowing me to kind of dab and give it that nice rounded shrub look Mix more color if you need to. Maybe allow this to dry just a tad bit more before you go in if you want. But this is what I am doing right now. And adding a little bit more over here as well. Again, the purpose of this is to keep things loose and fun and just build up on your quick watercolor sketches. going to add some over here because if you look in the image it's the darker tones that kind of help show foreground elements and then background elements so you're kind of roughly creating that idea of layers of shrubbery on the property Okay, so we've got this happening. I'm going to allow this to dry just a tad, taking some damp water, or sorry, taking some water because obviously water is damp. So dampening my brush, I'm kind of skirting around here. This area is a little bit yellowish. Now again, we don't have to be exact as to what's happening in the, um, in the image, but I'm dropping in some of my cadmium very loosely here, and then I'm going to layer this with a little bit of the raw sienna and adding some raw sienna tones in here that beautiful wheat color maybe even a little bit on this side just a tad perfect I'm doing I'm going to do a little bit of that over on this end here too I've just taken some of the raw sienna and I am highlighting or not highlighting just kind of going along this edge here and I want it to kind of fade off just like we have the green over there so all I'm going to do is get more of that raw sienna and just drop it at the edge and kind of try and give it some strokes that help show some texture in this area. I got a little bit on the pathway. That'll happen when you're doing a loose style of painting. Just take your brush with just a damp brush rather and just swipe the color off and you should be fine. I'm going to get a little bit of our mixed greenish tone and just drop that in over there too. We're just leaving this area fading into white. So now we can do our rooftop. And for the rooftop, I like the idea of using 
something like a burnt sienna mixed with a little bit of umber perhaps just because it's a little bit reddish it's like a reddish brown at the top so I'm gonna get a little bit of my burnt sienna a little bit of that umber kind of like that brown and then let's make the darkest area right here now at this point you just need to make sure that the outskirts of your like the area around your your roof is not damp so we don't get any bleeding or blooming of color in there and I want the darkest area to be this front facing one this is a bit too dark but I'm just gonna run with that for now sometimes stuff like this happens and it's okay you just go with it you don't have to feel like you have ruined it because finish the process you might just surprise yourself or you can just take off some color like that taking more of that lighter tone or the brown for our roof I'm completing this portion of it perfect I'm going to get a little bit more of our burnt sienna and drop some of that into the roof here and then drop a little bit of that on this side that nice rich brown for our roof now we're taking a little bit of the leftover you can actually do this at the very end if you need to um, and use the zero for this part just drawing in the little chimneys and the little doodads at the top of the house so I'm just using the zero which is perfect for something like this I'm just going in and adding these colors in. You could also use um, like a black graphic pen if you want just to add those little details in. We're obviously going to intensify the color over there just so it stands out a bit more but for now I think that should be good. We are now moving on to adding more detail to our trees. So for that we are switching back to the number four. And we're going to get some of our green and mix that in with some of the umber. So now we have a nice dark green, like a wooded brown, brown green almost. And we're just going over on top of the, the trees, the cypress trees that we already have. And we're adding details. So for instance, over here. And this is where having your, and all I'm doing is dabbing in a very impressionistic sort of style. Feel free to leave a little bit of gaps happening if you want to show um, like greenery in the background, for instance. So I'm kind of dabbing into individual trees and notice because this area is already damp it's giving us a beautiful fade here's our background ish um cypress tree didn't finish my comment there there's another one right in front of it so i'm just going to let this be and do a darker one right there we're getting more color adding some more of this beautiful color onto our trees on the right hand side here before we do that actually let's dab some right in the shrubs and the bushes because this is also the area that's still a little bit damp and we're layering additional color on top so now we're getting another layer of color which is also very nice so 
So we're just dab, dab, dabbing. I'm going to get a little bit of dabbing happening over here as well. Some of that happening at the bottom here. Some around over here because we've got just like a semblance of an idea that there's like more shrubbery happening there. And then as I'm going more towards the edges, I'm washing off most of the color and I'm just, again, like a very light dab. Okay, perfect. So now let's do our, the top of the trees or the trees rather. So same thing like we did on the left hand side, we're doing on the right hand side dabbing away and by now if you've done all the other videos with me you're probably a pro at painting these trees and layering color and making sure um, you're getting some beautiful darks and lights look at that oh my gosh I love how this looks almost reminds me of um the cute little wedding invitations that you get sometimes with with the view of the location this totally reminds me of that so that's an idea as well like how you can use the skills that you gain from these videos here to create your own little map elements whether it's wedding invitations or any other invitations for that matter just a thought. Okay, getting more color. This is all about layering. If you haven't figured it out already, getting some more happening around here. And then I think instead of doing a whole lot of detail there we'll just allow this to dry up and then uh, continue here's one actually here's one tree right here and it's supposed to be right on the front yard yeah keeping the rest of the green fairly as is Doing another one like right here. I think there were like two. So you can see how these elements stand out a lot more just because they are darker and they're on a light background. So now we're going in with the zero. We're going to get some off our umber and we're going to paint in the little windows and the doors and maybe even. Um, do another round for the chimneys and stuff at the top. Just make sure before you do this that you are allowing things to dry before you go in, okay? So here we go. All I'm doing is painting these little areas that I left open in this dark color. No need to leave any white space. You can just sort of go for it and paint the whole thing dark. Now I'm thinking perhaps it's easier to use sepia so i'm going to drop in some sepia just so it is a lot darker than the trees around it yeah i think i like sepia better so let's do that for the windows and such and hop back on all right so this is how it ended up looking now all i'm going to do one more thing like this is the last thing i'm going to do it is going to be adding a little bit of green dark green detail just on the outskirts here. So exactly where we added our brown or umber, this is where we're gonna go in and add some cute little shrubbery details. So all I'm doing is just lightly zigzagging, kind of going along this edge. And then as we get to this side, we're just gonna do little lines to kind of indicate some off 
the distance in the distance um, cypress trees that's the word I was looking for so getting more of that dark green just kind of go on you could even do some little taller ones if you wanted to sort of show more or a little like dabbing so that it's not a straight line but you can see that there's details off in the back and let's do another one over here or more over here so first you're doing a little bit of an outline and then you're doing little lines to indicate your cypress trees or little circular kind of shapes to kind of show that there's other stuff there and that is pretty much it i'm going to erase that line and leave this in this cute little quaint picture oh one more thing that we could do is adding a little bit of um gray maybe like a Payne's gray just around this area here so very watered down version of Payne's gray just to sort of show that pathway leaving the outskirts white and this wasn't really a pathway or anything but I'm just gonna do that in there again keeping it loose fun um, very impressionistic almost and there we have it we have done tons of layers to get this really cute loose image um, or Tuscan scenic view right here. Feel free to add more details to your shrubs if you want to. I'm going to leave this as is. I'm pleased with how this looks. And that's it, guys. So if you've liked this, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe button. And I would love to see what you do. So please do share it with me on your social media. I have indicated that below. And if you're looking for any of the items I have used, I have listed it in the description below as well. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next week for a new video.